Today we're going to go over Pythagorean Theorem. And your essential question is how can Pythagorean Theorem be used in the real world? The first thing we need to go over is what exactly is Pythagorean Theorem. And here's your equation. A and B um, can be either of your legs of your triangle and it doesn't matter. C must be your hypotenuse or the longest side. So here's what that would look like on a right triangle. And just in case you ever forget how to find the hypotenuse, I know I've gone over this before, but I just want to make sure that you remember. If you have trouble finding where the hypotenuse is, this 90 degree angle sign right here, if you make it into an arrow, it points right to it always. Okay, so let's go over an example. So in this problem, we have to identify our A, our B, and our C. Um, A and B, it doesn't matter. It could either be X or 4. Those are our legs because 5 is our hypotenuse. So I'm going to make my A, X. I'm going to make my B, 4, and my C, 5. And then you plug it into this equation. So now we just need to plug those in. A is X squared plus B is 4 squared and C is 5 squared. So now we need to square all of those numbers. It is a very good idea to learn all your squares up to 15. It just makes it a whole lot easier on you rather than having to go back to a calculator over and over again because your brain can move much faster than a calculator can. Um, so 4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is 25. Subtract both sides, 16 off of both sides. Bring your x squared down, and that is 9. But that's not our answer, because that's what x squared is. So to undo a square, you have to take the square root of both sides. And the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 9 is 3. So our answer is going to be 3 inches. Do not forget your units. I will count off on your test. Um, so if you see this answer is a whole number, that won't always happen, but there's a specific type of um, numbers that will always be whole numbers, no matter what type of size they are. So um, those are called Pythagorean triples. Um, Pythagorean triples will always be whole numbers. Here are some of your most common Pythagorean triples. So out of these, each of the three would be a side of a right triangle. Remember, the biggest number will be your hypotenuse. So if you were to solve um, for the uh, missing side, let's say you didn't have one of these numbers, it would still give you a whole number. And if you memorize these, you don't even have to do Pythagorean theorem. You can just state your answer. So in the triangle up above, in the above example, your hypotenuse is 5 and one of your legs is 4. So you look at your uh, hypotenuse, that is 5, which is right here, and then one of my legs is 4, so my answer had to be 3. And you wouldn't have had to plug it into that equation, but you would need to memorize these. And there are a whole lot more, but these are the most common. Um, but there is also a little bit more to it because multiples of these num numbers are also considered triples as well. And um, so if we took 3, 4, 5, and we wanted to multiply it all by 2, that would give us 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 5 is 10. 6, 8, 10 is also a triple. If you were to do 6 squared plus 8 squared, it would give you 10 squared as your answer, or 100. Um, another example would be to multiply the 5, 12, 13 by 4. So 5 times 4 is 20, 12 times 4 is 48, and 13 times 4 is 52. That is also a triple. So multiples of triples are also triples. Um, go ahead and turn your page over, and we're going to go over how to approach area problems using the Pythagorean Theorem. And here's an example. So whenever you're given a problem like this, um, your right triangle is in the middle and then your legs are make one of the sides of the squares that form those squares. So um, all the squares are already squared because to find the area of a square you take the sides squared. 
So um, whatever this side and this side of the square is, you'd multiply them together and that would give you your answer. Um, but since they're squares, they both would be the exact same. So whatever number this side is time, you would square it and then it would give you this. So this is actually nine because nine squared is 81. So um, this is our equation. And remember your legs are your A and B. So 81 and 16 will replace my A and B, but they're actually going to replace my A squared and my B squared because they are already squared. So it'll be 81 plus 16, not 81 squared plus 16 squared, it's just 81 plus 16. And that will tell us what B is, and B needs to also be squared to find an area. So all you're really doing is adding the two numbers together. It's actually exceedingly simple. So 81 plus 16 is 97. And then don't forget your units, which is feet, and they will be squared. Your units will always be squared. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more depth of that whenever we do areas, but uh, areas units will always be squared and it's because area is two dimensional. So it's like the top of your desk. Um, it's a flat surface, it's two dimensional, so all of your units have to be squared. Whenever we do volume, that's three dimensions um, because it's an actual object and all your units will be cubed. So however many dimensions it is, that's how many, the little number you're gonna have outside of your units. Um, Next, we're gonna cover a word problem. That'll be the last thing we do. So here is an example word problem. So this says, Eric placed a 68 foot ladder against a wall. How far away from the wall would Eric need to place the ladder in order to reach a window 60 feet up the wall? The very first, oh, and that's a question, sorry. The very first thing you want to do is draw a picture of the situation. And here's what that would look like. The second thing you want to do is set up your Pythagorean theorem problem and solve. So, um, since the ladder is my hypotenuse, um, I'm going to make a x, so x squared plus, and I'm going to make b 60. 60 squared is equal to 68 squared. And we need to go ahead and square those. 60 squared is 3,600. 68 squared is 4,624. We need to subtract 3,600 from both sides. And so this is x squared, 4,624 minus 3,600 leaves me with 1024. Take the square root of both sides. And whenever you take the square root of 1024, it is 32. So don't forget your units, it's 32 feet. Make sure you go to the bottom and write your summary and notes are finished.